Hey everybody, it's Chuck Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Coliseum. In the last episode, we had quite a train wreck, actually. Discreet air, game crash, and then losing a fight that I can't do again. So, yeah. Anyway, though, in this episode, I've actually spent about two minutes just trying to find out where to go. I've cut out me stumbling around trying to find which way to go for about two minutes. And this is a post-commentated intro, so I'm going to drop you back into my original commentary for this video now. Ah, here we go. That bodybuilder that I did not walk past. Oh my my, tell me it's not you again. You might have seen her off in the background. You get to fight her again. And this time around, let's see what she's got. She's got a floppy and an octillery. Interesting choice, I'll say that much. So, I guess at the very least we get to see octillery's getting hit animation that I love so much. Uh, again, I kind of apologize for the whole thing with Gonzap. I didn't know that if you lost to him that he disappears forever. Um, I didn't know that he actually disappeared if you had already snagged his Skarmory and if you beat him, and if you either beat him or lost to him at the Snag him Hideout. Maybe there's some way that you can make him respawn and you can tell me about that, but I actually looked it up on the internet, and as far as I see here, if you've defeated him twice and you've snagged Skarmory, or you fought him twice and you've snagged Skarmory, rather, the game will actually count a loss as a defeat and you never see him again. I could be reading wrong and I've never actually lost to Gonzat before. Plus, like I said, I haven't really practiced after game much. But yeah, I don't really know how to justify that. I, it's kind of a shame that I didn't get to show an optional boss fight, but I can't really say much else. But anyway, I, I really shouldn't keep harping on about oh, that. Uh, okay. Hopefully that gave you some enjoyment in this video, as bad as that was that I didn't get Gonzap. <laughs> oh god, anyway. So, we got Lonia here. I forget if she has a Shadow Pokemon. I'm wanting to say she has something on her team that's of interest. I, she's got two other Pokemon. But, of course, it's been a while, so I'm not exactly sure. Let's do Surf, and we'll do Psychic on that artil Artillery. Octillery. Yeah. So, I, I do have to wonder, though. Oh, come on! I do have to wonder, oh come on, I do have to wonder, what is it with her lineup? Like, I understand that, like, you know, not all trainers should, like, stick to a T of this, though, but I noticed that she doesn't have, like, fighting Pokemon. Like, it's just, like, what's, what, what, what's, I guess Octillery maybe, like, eating Octopus is healthy, but Dunsparce? I don't know, maybe, like, digging is good exercise, I don't know. And, okay, she's got a big old ball of blubber right there. That's definitely not something that a bodybuilder would have for a Pokemon. So, wow, um, Dunsparce, you fail. Uh, again, Dunsparce is the definition of missed potential. I can't say that enough because I would love to use a Dunsparce so, so much. Like, it's always a Pokemon that I consider using to show how good its move, how good its move pool is and just how awesome its ability is with that move pool, but it's just, I always decide against it because anytime that I ever try to use one for a short time, it underperforms like nobody's business with those stats. It's really a shame because I really want Pokemon X and Y to give Dunsparce an evolution. I know that I've said just about every time any Pokemon games come out that I want Dunsparce to evolve, but it's really true. It needs to evolve. It's an awesome Pokemon ten years in the making. Actually, no. Counting Japan, counting Japanese release of Gold Silver, that's fourteen years in the making. It needs to evolve. Come on, Nintendo. It's time to give Dunsparce an evolution. I say we start a movement to get Dunsparce an evolution. Because they'll totally listen to that, sure, yeah, because petitioning has always worked in the history of forever when it came to wanting a game company to do what you want. Just ask the mother fan base. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, I shouldn't joke about stuff like that. A lot of fan bases have made legitimate efforts to get game companies to listen to them, and there have been successful ones in the past, but it's kind of petty to want to get Nintendo to listen to give Dunsparce an evolution. For all I know, they could have already designed one, and we'll get it in Pokemon X and Y come this October or whenever it comes out, and I'm complaining about nothing. In fact, I'm going to think about it like that. I'm typically a very optimistic, very positive person. We'll go with that. We will go with... They've already designed Dunsparce's evolution, we've just yet to see it. I guess speaking of X and Y, I haven't really talked about it much, but a lot of you have been saying that it's really cool to see the first 3D Pokemon game, you know, with the main series kind of going more with this style. And I do have to say, X and Y looks so good, man. It, it exceeded all my expectations that it had. I thought it was just going to be like Black and White 2's graphics and 16x9. It's not like that at all. The models in battle look so smoothed out. It just it looks so nice. Uh, Sylveon's animations look awesome. And I'll, I'll say this straight up. Sylveon's 
bows in its design don't really leave a good taste in my mouth. But I'll say this straight up, I don't dislike a single one of the six Pokemon that they've shown. I love all six of them. All six of them could be contenders for some of my favorite Pokemon up to this point. I don't commonly say that when a Pokemon game is up and coming. And Best attack animation ever. Okay, well that really sucked. I uh, got into a battle and... Well, yeah. I, um... I think we're just about through here. Uh, let's just keep going. I think I was pretty much done talking about whatever I had to say. Hey! Yo, if it is, it was! You got some gun showing up here to betray Team Stagon! This is where it ends! Okay! I know you're here to wreck the like before. Okay, so... He's talked about having a sec- Biden! Oh my god! Dude, this game! Oh man. This is, like, predicting some kind of political slander. Joe Biden, not only was he the TM that Brock gives you early in the red, blue, and yellow, but he's also working for Team Snagum and he's going to steal your Pokemon! And for some reason he's got Pokemon that he forces to create art for him. I have no idea. But yeah, I just find that very funny that his name is Biden and this precedes the 2008 election by like four years. Yeah. So, if you haven't guessed by now, he specializes in Smeargles. And lucky for us, we one-shot all of these. Unlucky for us, his last Pokemon. Ha, huh, have you guessed what it is yet? Huh? Have you, have you, have you? Give me a few seconds. Okay, Ruby's creepy giant eyes have popped up. Yeah, it's a shadow Pokemon. So we have a snaggable Smeargle right here. So, let's do this. I would like to do a simple smoke screen on that. And we'll do Psychic. Anyway, though, Smeargle, a Shadow Pokemon. Finally, a new Shadow Pokemon we've yet to encounter uh, in the after game. Smeargle is, at the same time, Smeargle is quite possibly the most unique Pokemon that was introduced in second generation. It is simultaneously has the biggest moveset of any Pokemon and the smallest. Smeargle only learns one attack, Sketch. What does Sketch do? It allows it to steal an attack permanently from the opponent, or rather copy it, not necessarily steal it. And because of that, he has given it double slap. Yeah, wonderful. But in all, but all in all, Smeargle, while it has crummy stats, if there is a strategy you can dream up, Smeargle is capable of doing it. There is absolutely no limits when you are working with a Smeargle. It can do anything. There, the sky is the limit with Smeargle. If you can find a Pokemon in the game that has the move that you want, just go battle it. It's especially helpful when items like the Versus Seeker exist and all that stuff, as well as Match Call and all that kind of stuff, because you can just look up the movesets online of various AI team members to find exactly what you want. I think there might be a database or two on the internet that does tell you easy locations to get moves for Smeargle, but... God, I remember people in tournaments that could use Smeargle so well. There are people that would give it, like, Dark Void and, like, Double Battle tournaments and that kind of stuff. It was crazy. Granted, that is an inescapable breaking of sleep clause for some, but God, like, I saw Smeargles with... Well, probably the best move to give Smeargle, actually, would be Spore. Uh, Spore is a 100 accuracy uh, sleeping move that only the Paris family can learn normally, but of course, Smeargle can learn any move, so there you go. It's it's really, really cool. I, I like Smeargle a lot. The only downside about training a Smeargle is sometimes you got to save reset to get the, what you want, but... Hey, hardly a complaint when you're working in a main series game and you can just save before battling any trainer. Not like this game, where you can't do that. We're going to do Confuse Ray like that, and we'll use another Great Ball. I don't really have anything else to use. So, things are really winding down. We don't have that many Shadow Pokemon left to catch. If I'm not mistaken, we have four, this being one of them. So, yeah, let's see if we can catch this thing with full health. Let's do it. One! I wasn't really expecting that to work anyway. One, two, three. One, two, three. Full health capture. Not bad. Okay, let's do this. Oh, wait. There's nothing left to do. The battle's over. I couldn't win. Kaboom, he says. He's whatever that guy's name from Wind Waker was. I can never remember his name, but I love him. Let's see. I was going to knock you out. The paint... Then paint on your then paint your loser face with my smear. <laughs> he was gonna go jigglypuff on our ass. 
Oh man, he was gonna knock us out while we're knocked out. He was gonna paint on our face with his Smeargle. Oh man, that is awesome. So there's a snag machine that was destroyed in the explosion. And we have yet another Team Snagum guy. So let's see, do you think we could really fix the snag machine? Are you that gullible? It's all an elaborate trap by Master Gonzap to sucker you into coming. So yes, uh, we lost to Gonzap, but that didn't seem to do anything. Apparently we are still somehow trapped here. And this is Agrev. Oddly, he's wearing sunglasses, and he's got a unique model from the other Snagums. I'm not really sure why this guy is so unique, but I don't know. Maybe he's got the position of power. I mean, it's just Team Snagum is his title. It wasn't really anything special. I've never been able to really find artwork of this guy, though, so I doubt that it classifies him as a boss. So I'm not going to give him the boss trainer where I give off the movesets. But, yeah. Uh, please don't attack Psycho. Well, um, crap. That's gonna kind of ruin my first turn a little bit. Let's see. Okay, we take out Shift Tree, no problem. All right, not bad. So, just saying, last guy we fought had Smeargle. We were told ahead of time what Shadow Pokemon to look for in here. So, gee, I wonder who we're going to fight. Do you have any ideas? I don't know, I have a few theories. I think we could be fighting, um, I don't know, a Teddy Ursa. Um... Let's see, uh, I don't know, I don't think they're gonna give us a fully evolved Pokemon this late in the game. No, I don't think that at all. Uh, let's do that Psych on that Machoke, and by the way, speaking of Machoke, look at its red and blue sprite. I forgot just how weird its eyes look. Like, it's got the most awkward face, it's like making a face like walk simultaneously doing like derpy eyes. I'm just like, okay? Yeah, I think that looks good. Anyway, we have a Shadow Pokemon here, Ursaring. This thing... I'm sure many of you that watch the anime know that Ursaring is... Why did I use Flame Wheel on Marsh Stomp? What was I thinking? I think I meant to attack uh, Macho by predicting that Ursaring coming out, but I think I accidentally targeted Marsh Stomp. Oh, well. But, uh, Ursaring. It's... For those that watch the anime, you know that they use it all the time in all kinds of gags and all that, but in the games, let's, but we're talking about the games here. It is a very strong attacker. Nothing else to it. Its primary methods of fighting are that it has a 130 attack stat, and it could potentially have guts for its ability, actually no, it outright does have guts for its ability in this game, I forgot, Quick Feet didn't exist yet. So, if you can get a status infliction on it and then just attack like nuts, that's typically where it shines. The downside is that it's very slow, and it's not perfect in the defensive way in in defensive ways for a normal type in general it's pretty dang slow it's not like snorlax slow but it's close and for that reason it can be kind of tough to handle it's not impossible mind you but it can be a little tough let's do um no i don't want that to poison let's do return on that and let's also do second my screen keeps flickering uh, i don't know if you guys are seeing it in the recording but my screen is flickering and it worries me because I had the game crash. I mean, I'm wondering if that's like the disc skipping a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it, I know it doesn't have to all constantly load stuff from the disc. I know that stuff is loaded from the disc to the RAM, and that's how, you know, CD technology works in running a game. But, yeah, I don't know. It just it, it keeps looking like the screen's flickering to me, and I can't really explain it, and it's worrying me. So, yeah. Let's see what I want to do here. Let's do Scary Face because I love its animation. Almost as good as the, uh, almost as good as uh, Fake Tears. And while I could do Reflect, which would probably be smart, I think I'm just going to use that Ultra Ball on it right here because I'm pretty confident in my ability to catch it. I really shouldn't say that out loud, but it's got a catch rate of 60, and its HP is about halfway down. I caught Metagross, I think, with about this much health. I don't know, maybe it was lower. I forget. I don't remember. It's actually been a while since I recorded, and I, I will say this. I do appreciate those of you that are patient when I don't update for a few days because the thing is, I like making videos, and if I don't update... I'm either working on something, or I have something preoccupying me in real life. Like, I had my mother visit me for the first time in a year for her birthday uh, recently, and that's kind of why I wasn't updating over the weekend, is because I hadn't seen my mother in a year, and yeah, these were bonus videos, so... Uh, while I understand some of you do like it when I do bonus content, it's not like the series is ongoing or I left it on a cliffhanger. I mean, we're kind of just going around catching various Shadow Pokemon that we didn't catch the first time around, so... It's not much of anything special, um, but yeah, it's just, I just kind of wanted to say that though. Those of you that are patient, I very much appreciate it. I, 
that's really all I have to say. One, two. Never mind. I was hoping that that would go into me catching it. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. Oh, God. Okay, that didn't take that long, but still, I was kind of worried about it. So, yes, we have two of the four remaining Master Gonzap! We have two of the four remaining Master Gonzaps. Well, I don't know. There's two of him, so I was kind of right. You know how to work the snag machine, all right? I don't like admitting it, but you've beaten me thoroughly. So, with that, we are done with the Snagum hideout. We have revisited it quite a few times. But what I wanted to bring up is, we actually got ourselves an email after beating Gonzap. Well, not really beating Gonzap, but after the game thought we beat Gonzap. It's a Shadow Pokemon list from Net. He has found more Shadow Pokemon. The additions are Noctel, who we caught in, like, Episode 2. Fluffy, who we caught in, like, Episode 2. Houndoom, who we just caught. Shuckle, who is actually new. Miltank, who we just caught. And Delibird, who sucks ass. So... Wonderful list. As useful, as useful, as usual, not very useful. As useful, not very usual. Well, that too, I guess. So, yeah, it's useful, not very usually, so that does make a lot of sense. So, anyway, what I'd like to do is, I'm gonna head back to the under now, because we got that D disc from Gonzap, and I think it would be high time that we head there and we try using that D disc. In the next episode, next time on Pokemon Coliseum, we'll be doing just that. See you guys then. I'm evil. Never mind, we have an email, so you're getting a little bit more screen time. But it's, it won't last long, you know it's coming- who is this? This is bit in the end, I was taking photos the other day when I saw this guy with an amazing head so I snapped it. He was singing a weird song, something about the Coliseum being his new place. Next time on Pokemon Coliseum! See you guys then!